Vaccinations have stopped the spread of diseases, nothing else. They can help save a child's life and not only that, but can help protect someone you care about and our future generations. It's just a no for me. Mm. No, it's not natural. As a concerned parent, you have to question these things. We can't just accept what we're told, can we? I wouldn't vaccinate. I think stopping Mother Nature, stopping the course of natural progression and natural development causes a lot of problems later down the line. It's really important to vaccinate our children because the, the vaccinations protect them. I just don't see the point in some of them and I would choose not to do them. Vaccination is really important because what it does is protect our children against getting diseases that can be very serious. They can lead to long-term complications or even death. I disagree with having six in one. I think that's too much to stick in such a tiny little body. I don't agree with that. The whole idea of vaccination is to protect them and to do that you have to get in early. So for example, there's a disease called meningitis B and the peak age for an attack of that is at five months of age. So obviously you want to give the baby the vaccine before that so that they, they don't reach that age where they're at peak risk of catching it. In the UK, we offer children vaccines against 13 diseases. This includes four vaccines to protect against different sorts of meningitis, vaccines against diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, and measles, mumps, and rubella. I think it can be helpful, and I think it can also be um, scary. It just angers me, really, because it is so in my opinion, fabricated. The NHS would not promote something if it was that detrimental to a child's health. We know from a recent survey that many parents, about half of parents of young children, say that they've seen uh, anti-vaccine information on social media or on online forums. In some ways, I think it's opened the eyes to the realities of the side effects of some vaccinations, but the negative is that you get a lot of biased information, you get a lot of attacks to people. There's a lot of uh, controversial things and uh, posts put up and I think you really need to research where your information is coming from and what country it's coming from. I think I would just really stick to evidence-based research papers, stay away from social media I would recommend. <laughs> I think the problem is that if you're constantly seeing this material then of course it can undermine your confidence and make you have doubts in vaccination. As a parent, don't we all worry? I did have worries and concerns about the risk associated with vaccinations. I didn't really have any worries, I don't think, about the potential risks linked with the vaccinations. I think I was more concerned about my child being upset by them. I actually spoke to the nurse and I said I, said I was scared, I said I was worried, why I was worried, and she completely reassured me, she gave me facts, she told me that certain uh, bits of evidence that I've produced to her, she said they're completely false. Deciding whether to have your child immunised is a really important decision and it's important not to base it on what you might see on the internet. So talk to your health professional, don't be afraid to ask questions, that's what they're there for, it's really important. Nothing. Zilch. Zero. Nada. Absolutely fine in the morning, not even a temperature, not even a sore leg. I think pretty much all my children had a, a few side effects after they were vaccinated. They got a little bit of a temperature, um, they got like a little lump under where they were vaccinated. After any vaccine it's not uncommon to have a sore area where the needle went in or to be um, a bit feverish about a day or two days, maybe off food, but those symptoms usually um, clear up very quickly. So when people started becoming worried about this, it was as the result of a paper that was published in a very prestigious medical journal. And indeed, the authors said, we did not prove a link between MMR vaccine and autism. So in the intervening 20 years, there has been a huge amount of research looking at this. And the bottom line is, there is no good evidence that MMR causes autism. And there is a lot of very good evidence showing 
no link. About one in every 3,000 children who's had MMR vaccine might have a febrile fit, so that's a fever fit. But you need to compare that with the disease, and we know that people have, that have measles, about one in 200 have these fever fits. So that's 15 times more likely to have a fever fit with the disease than with the vaccine. It's categorically not safer to have the illness compared with the vaccine. If you have the illness, you run the risk of being seriously ill, but also of having serious complications that may be life-changing, such as with meningitis, people sometimes have to have their limbs amputated. And you can also die from these illnesses. So last year, in Europe alone, 80 people died from measles. Before vaccines come into use, they're really carefully tested in trials. But once they're introduced, that's not the end of that. So monitoring carries on after a vaccine has been introduced, looking for any signals of safety issues. And that continues the whole time the vaccine is in use. Did you know that if your child has a reaction to a vaccination, then you can enter all that information in the yellow card scheme, which is a government website. They need to know how effective the vaccination is and the side effects so they can make better vaccinations. Public Health England produce very good leaflets which provide a lot of answers to, to parents' questions and it's those sorts of information, bits of information that we need to make sure parents have ready access to.